Insane Homes of Richest People Hello, and welcome to Luxury Daily Input. Today, I'm going to share the list of insane homes of richest people. Doesn't it sound exciting? Let's jump into this list quickly. On number 10, we have Palazzo di Amore, Beverly Hills, California, owned by Jeff Green. This property stands out as a rare architectural gem that offers unparalleled privacy and resort-style living in an enchanting setting reminiscent of the Grand European Palace. Enter the estate through the beautiful wrought iron front gates and up the private quarter-mile driveway leading to the vast motor court with center fountain. The compound consists of approximately 50,000 square feet of living space, including the expansive main residence that features a grand two-story marble foyer with dual staircases, gracious great room, elegant colonnaded dining room, grand chef's kitchen, wood-paneled office and library, billiard room, wine tasting room that pays homage to the finest wine cellars in Europe, and features an approximate 10,000 bottle temperature-controlled wine storage and sprawling master suite that is an oasis of relaxation complete with private living room, expansive dual walk-in closets, opulent bathroom, and exceptional Turkish-style spa hammam. A separate, approximate 12,500 square foot entertainment complex features a bowling alley, stage, theater for 50 guests, ballroom and discotheque complete with a rotating dance floor for the ultimate luxurious entertainment experience. Other outstanding amenities include a detached guest house, tennis court, pavilion, and swimming pool. Number 9, 924 Bel Air Road, Bel Air, California, owned by Judy Garland. Luxury developer Bruce Mikowski has unveiled his masterpiece, 924 Bel Air Road, located in the confines of the ultra-exclusive Bel Air Enclave, the pinnacle of splendor and luxury. 38,000 square feet new construction home with 17,000 square feet of entertainment decks, two master suites, 10 oversized VIP guest suites, 21 luxury bathrooms, three gourmet kitchens, five bars, massage studio, wellness spa, state-of-the-art fitness center, 85-foot glass tile infinity swimming pool, 40-seat 4K Dolby Atmos Theater, four-lane bowling alley, lounge, auto gallery with cars worth more than 30 million, seven-person, full-time staff, over 100 curated art installations, outdoor pop-up theater, two fully stocked champagne wine cellars, massive candy wall, the most advanced home tech system in the world, an astonishing array of amenities and bespoke items from around the world, four meticulously curated levels, indoor-outdoor nirvana enhanced by 270-degree unobstructed views spanning from the mountains all the way to the ocean, and the incredible Los Angeles skyline in between. Number 8, 1819 Kensington Palace Gardens, London, owned by Lakshmi Mittal. Kensington Palace Gardens is a tree-lined avenue half a mile long now in the heart of London's embassy land. Kensington Palace Gardens is often cited as the most exclusive address on the street in West Central London. It is immediately to the west of Kensington Gardens and connects Notting Hill Gate with Kensington's High Street. It was built from the 1840s onwards on part of the grounds of Kensington Palace, and the freehold still belongs to the Crown Estate. The palace, which is the residence of the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge, Duke and Duchess of Kent, Duke and Duchess of Gloucester, and Prince and Princess Michael of Kent, fronts the southern part of the street on the eastern side. The houses at the northern end are mostly Italianate, with those at the southern end mostly in the Queen Anne style. The road was originally called the Queen's Road and was renamed Kensington Palace Gardens around 1870 when plane trees were planted in the avenue. Number 7, 220 Central Park South Penthouse, New York. 220 Central Park South is a residential skyscraper in Midtown Manhattan in New York City, situated along Billionaire's Row on the south side of Central Park South, between Broadway and 7th Avenue. 220 Central Park South is composed of two sections, a 70-story, 950-foot tower on the 58th Street that is the 17th tallest building in New York City, 
and an 18-story section on Central Park South. 118 apartments are duplex apartments, although some of the units have been combined to create a larger penthouse or duplex apartments. The building has a wine cellar, private dining rooms, and various recreational facilities. Hope you guys are enjoying the video. Do click the like button. Got that taken care of? Great, let's move on to number six. The Odeon Tower Penthouse, Monaco. Taking luxury living to dazzling new heights, the Tour Odeon Sky Penthouse is a grand vision of extravagant opulence built to dominate the top tier of exclusive luxury residences around the world. Rising majestically above the azure waters of the Mediterranean, the resplendent penthouse embraces unprecedented 360-degree views over the sea with a stunning outdoor rooftop and circular infinity pool linked to a balcony by water slide, making it the epitome of a luxury lifestyle beyond imagination. Located within the Golden Citadel of Monte Carlo, the Tour Odeon Tower is the latest addition to the elite status of the city-state of Monaco, setting a new standard for luxury living on an international scale. Overlooking the stunning coast of the Principality of Monaco with Larvato Beach, and the Ligarian Sea below. Tour Odeon is an unprecedented statement of extreme luxury in the veritable playground of millionaires and billionaires amid the glitz and glamour, wealth and oligarchical excess that is at the heart of Monaco. Number five, La Palais-Bou, Thiel-sur-Mer, France, owned by Pierre Bernard. On the French Riviera, facing Cannes Bay by the Massif de l'Estérel, is hiding the very discreet but still unusual Palais Boule. Pierre Cardin's house for more than 20 years, facing the Mediterranean Sea, you can stay in this strange and dreamy palace perched between sky and sea. True fantasy imagined by the man who called himself a scientist in housing more than an architect. Palais Boule was drawn by Antti Lavog's pen, a handyman adventurer. Number 4. Wittenhurst, owned by Andrei Guryev. Wittenhurst, London's largest private house, was built between 1913 and 1920 on an 11-acre plot in Highgate, a wealthy hilltop neighborhood north of the city center. First owned by Arthur Crossfield, an English soap magnate, the mansion was designed in the Queen Anne style and contained 25 bedrooms, a 70-foot-long ballroom, and a glass rotunda. The views from its gardens over Hampstead Heath and across the capital were among the loveliest in London. For decades, parties at Wittenhurst attracted potentates and royals, including, in 1951, Elizabeth, the future queen. The mansion has 65 rooms spread across three floors, including 25 bedrooms. One of the largest is the ballroom, measuring 70 feet long with a height of 20 feet. It has oak flooring and the timber wall panels are in walnut, with carved cornices embellished with gold leaf. Other rooms include the drawing room, study, entrance hall, and staircase. And most of the bedrooms are all in opulent classical style. Other richly decorated rooms include the dining room, Chinese room, billiard room, and the gallery hallway. Access to the property is through a three-fingered gatehouse. Number three, Via La Leopolda, Via Franche sur Mer, France, owned by Lily Safra. The Via La Leopolda is a large detached villa in Via Franche sur Mer in the Alpes Maritimes department on the French Riviera. The villa is situated on 18 acres of grounds. The villa has had several notable owners, including Gianni and Morella Angali, Isaac and Dorothy J. Killam, and since 1987 by Edmund Safra and then Lily Safra, who inherited the villa after her husband's death. Via La Leopolda in its current incarnation was designed and built from 1929 to 1931 by an American architect, Ogden Codman Jr., on an estate once owned by King Leopold II of Belgium. Leopold made the previous estate a present for his mistress, Blanche Zélie Josephine de la Croix, also known as Caroline la Croix, and it derived its name from him. After Leopold's death, 
Blanche de la Croix was evicted and his nephew, King Albert I, became its owner. Number two, Antilia Tower, Mumbai, owned by Mukesh Mbani. There are luxury homes and then there's Antilia. The Mumbai home of the business magnate Mukesh Mbani, chairman of Reliance Industries, Inspired by the mythical Atlantis Island, Mukesh Ambani's home, located in South Mumbai's Altamount Road, is estimated to be the world's second most expensive property after Buckingham Palace. The high-end mansion reportedly costs an estimated one to two billion dollars. Here are a few reasons why Mukesh Ambani's home, Antilia, has reached an iconic status in India and the world. The 400,000 square foot building is situated in one of the world's most expensive addresses, Altamount Road in South Mumbai. According to property trends, a single square foot of any real estate on Altamount Road ranges between a massive $11 and $1,200. Multiply that by 400,000 square feet and yeah, that's a lot. Mukesh Mbani's Antilia was designed by Chicago-based architects Perkins & Will, with the Australian-based construction company Leighton Holdings taking charge of its construction. The building comes with 27 floors, replete with extra high ceilings. Every floor is the same height as an average two-storied building. Additionally, Antilia is designed to survive an earthquake that measures 8 on the Richter scale. The architectural design of Antilia has been fashioned along the lines of the Lotus and the Sun. The top six floors of the building have been set aside as the private, full-floor residential area. The Mukesh Mbani home comes with a mega temple, a host of guest suites, a salon, an ice cream parlor, and a private movie theater to accommodate 50 people. Mukesh Mbani has a unique need for speed. It is no wonder that Antilia has six dedicated floors for cars. In fact, the garage has space to accommodate 168 cars. The building in South Mumbai has a dedicated car service station on the seventh floor. Talking about a need for speed, Antilia also has nine high-speed elevators, each assigned to different floors. Number one, Buckingham Palace, London, owned by the Crown Estate. Buckingham Palace has served as the official London residence of the UK sovereigns since 1837 and today is the administrative headquarters of the monarch. Although in use for the many official events and receptions held by the Queen, the state rooms at Buckingham Palace are open to visitors every summer. Buckingham Palace has 775 rooms. These include 19 staterooms, 52 royal and guest bedrooms, 188 staff bedrooms, 92 offices, and 78 bathrooms. In measurements, the building is 108 meters long across the front, 120 meters deep, including the center quadrangle, and 24 meters high. Today, Buckingham Palace is very much a working building and the centerpiece of the UK's constitutional monarchy, serving as the venue for many royal events and ceremonies, from entertaining foreign heads of state to celebrating achievements at investitures and receptions. More than 50,000 people visit the palace each year as guests to state banquets, lunches, dinners, receptions, and garden parties. Her Majesty also holds weekly audiences with the Prime Minister and receives newly appointed foreign ambassadors at Buckingham Palace. Thanks for watching the video, guys. Hope you liked it. Please like, share, and subscribe the video. And be ready to tune in again soon for more Luxury's Daily Input.